Today, on the Comic Book Report, I will be doing an overview of the most common comic book or graphic novel collection sizes and formats. Stick around and check it out. Greetings, everyone. My name is Dominic, and you are watching The Comic Book Report, where we review comic books and graphic novels so you can get an idea of what to read. Today, I went through my collection and selected a few books so that you can get an idea of different sizes, editions, or formats that are commonly used for most comic books and graphic novels today. Let's get started. All right, first up, of course, I'm using a single issue here. This is the issue I got for free comic book day. A standard issue is about six and five eighths inches wide by ten and one quarter inches high. If I haven't mentioned it on this channel yet, I don't really collect single issues. Uh, that was just not the direction I went down. I do a lot of trades or hardcover collections. I like to get a fuller story rather than a single issue, which I find more often these days doesn't contain anything close to a whole story. Anyway, this is a single issue. Like I said, I'm providing it just for context and to kind of give a baseline measurement here. After this, we're going to go ahead and proceed to the standard size trade paperback. These standard size collections are also called trades, and they are standard size because they are the same dimensions as a comic book itself. They will usually just contain a couple single issues put together. Sometimes they'll have special features, essays, introductions, uh, cover art, things like that, bonuses. You might have a trade paperback that's commonly anywhere between 5 and 10 issues. I've seen some that get closer to epic collection size that have 20 to 30 issues. Uh, but it's really any paperback collection like this that is standard size. The next format I have here is a standard size hardcover collection. Right here I have the Man of Steel Volume 2 of the John Byrne run. While these standard size hardcovers look larger than your trade paperbacks or single issues, the actual Pages themselves are the same size, it just appears larger because of the hardcover uh, overhang a little bit. But the issues themselves are all reproduced at the same size. I'll go ahead and do a size comparison for you, stacking that standard size trade paperback on top of this standard size hardcover, so you can get an idea of what I'm talking about here. Other than the hardcover overhang, these are the same size. The art is all reproduced standard size, the same as the issue itself. The next format I'll be showcasing is the oversized hardcover or the hardcover deluxe editions. Here, for example, I have my oversized hardcover of the Zdarsky Daredevil run. Unlike the formats we've done so far, the oversized hardcover is enlarged. I believe these dimensions are closer to 7 by 11, which means what you're looking at is larger than what was printed in the single issues of the comic books. These editions, I think, are some of the best for collectors. I love seeing the art blown up to a larger scale. And generally, it seems like the publishers care about these editions more. I find that they're made with better paper stock, usually, and just have better extras or better attention to detail. And I'll go ahead and provide another size comparison here. This, again, comparing the oversized hardcover with that standard size hardcover of the Man of Steel collection. So you can see the differences here the discrepancy, and you can clearly see that the oversized hardcover or deluxe hardcover is a little bit above. All right, the next kind of format we have here is the much-beloved Omnibus Edition. I'm going to go ahead and show off my Iron Man Omnibus here. Like the oversized hardcover before it, the Omnibus Editions are also oversized. These editions as well, it's not uncommon to see them at 30, 40, 50 issues long. While they are at typically a higher price point, it's a great way to collect a sizable chunk of issues. These formats, it's not uncommon to see an entire run from an author or illustrator collected in one single volume. For many collectors, these editions are must-haves. And for your money, include so much content. Now I'll go ahead and provide you with a comparison of the omnibus format to the oversized hardcover. As you can see, they are the same dimensions, with the omnibus just being a little bit thicker, purely due to the additional content. 
And here's the Omnibus compared to the trade paperback format. All right, the next format I have for you is the Compendium Editions. I have here my beat-up copy of The Walking Dead Compendium 1. These are very large, standard size paperback formats that often collect something near an omnibus size, issue-wise, but in a standard size trade paperback style format. To illustrate what I'm talking about, here is that compendium next to the omnibus format. You can clearly tell which one of these is oversized. And then for good measure, here is the trade paperback alongside the compendium edition to see the size. Just for fun, I'm also going to show you an example of a box set. This is my box set of the lock and key collection, collecting the first six trade paperbacks. Box sets aren't really uniform. They can collect hardcover or soft covers within the boxes. I'm just providing this one example to show that there are more creative ways of formatting and things you can see on a bookcase. And then, of course, you have formats that are all their own. This is my soft-ish, hardcover-ish collection of a James Bond comic book adapting a few of Ian Fleming's novels. This thing's size is all over the place, as you can see when I stick it next to a single issue here for size. A couple other popular formats I've seen around that I don't personally own in my collection that I want to bring up are the Absolute Collections. These are oversized hardcovers, uh, usually come in a slipcase box. They are usually even larger than the oversized hardcovers and omnibuses. And then, of course, you have the gallery editions. Uh, I've seen these as well. Very large format, showcasing the artwork. And lastly, to round out this video, I did want to focus primarily on physical collections, but I'd be remiss not to include the digital. So here's my iPad. I have the Kindle app here, and I bought some comics on Amazon or Comixology. Obviously, this format is kind of beholden to the device you read it on, but for those unfamiliar with digital format, I wanted to give an idea of what you can expect. Digital isn't for everyone. I know a lot of collectors don't always love it, but it can be a great way to read issues that are either out of print or hard to find, as well as a way to sometimes save money and for sure to save space. Alright everyone, and that does it for my brief overview of a lot of the common comic book or graphic novel formats, sizes, editions. I know this is probably common knowledge to a lot of you, but I know there's a few on my channel that don't really read comic books or are newer to it, and I think a video like this would have helped me a lot when I first started. And who knows, maybe this has helped a few of you. If you would like to see a review of any of the books in this video, please let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching the Comic Book Report. If you haven't yet, please consider subscribing to my channel. Or, watch some of my other popular videos. And until next time, have a great day.